Hello Maths fans, I'm once again here with my many, many guests who you may recognise from the recent game show edition that we uh, just filmed, in fact. And the Maths Appeal team, Bobby and Susan, over there on the end, were very, very keen to chat to our countdown stars, James and Kai. And so we thought, let's all sit down and chat maths, basically. Countdown as a show is um, a regular show that people see when maths is in it. And so they kind of, you know, it's a way in for many people. And uh, we just were like wanted to know, because a lot of people kind of get scared by it, you know, just thinking about mental math stuff. And actually, it's been really great fun recording it today, you know, and watching you in action. And the two of you are quite... Phenomenal. Honestly, right, so you're like... You're a bit hot. Like, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, these numbers. Legends, yeah. uh, oh. you know what I mean? So it's kind of, we'd love to find out from you, you know, like some of your trade secrets, um, but also find out how you got involved. How did you get into Countdown? Well, actually, my brother was on Countdown before I was. So he went on when he was about 16, because he was big into Scrabble. And so he was in the sort of word game scene. <laughs> scene? So, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the word game scene. Yeah, oh, we definitely. had Bobby talking about the quizzing scene. scene. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he'd gone on uh, a little bit before I had. And um, yeah, I see my fan. And Wow. Following the we always used to watch it. I mean, we used to sit around at home watching it, you know, coming from school. It was on at 4.30 in the afternoon in those days. Yeah, yeah. And that was Carol so, Waterman was your... That's right. But yeah, so we used to come back and, you know, eat our Frosties or whatever after school <laughs> in front of the TV. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, so... Um, and how did you get into it, Kai? Uh, I've sort of, supposedly, I've, I've been watching Countdown from like a very young age. My mum says I, I was watching it, I was about two or three, and I was like <laughs> learning the letters and numbers from Countdown, apparently, yeah. Um, so, so I started picking it up and then I'd watch it most days, I guess, and just kept picking up my knowledge, kept, you know, developing tips and tricks, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and it really got me interested in maths and numbers. And um, even the letter side is quite mathematical, the way it all, uh, all the anagrams, the way it all works together. Um, so it really, really sort of piqued my interest for um, the mathy side of things. And yeah, I just, just took it from there, really. Like what? are your tips on how to go about, say, working out the letters? Because both of you have done working out, and it was really interesting to see it, because it's like watching different people's minds work. Um, so, they, so what is your strategy when you're given the letters? And have you got your working out? I mean, yeah, yeah, I, I think you can have, have a look said. if you want. I, mean, I could see that there were different things going on yeah. with both of you, actually. Mine's quite, mine's quite minimalist, really. I just write the letters out. Um, and then the, the first start is always looking for, for common um, prefixes and suffixes. So common, common bits you put at the start or the end of the word. I mean, this first round here, we had ING, oh. uh, which is like, that's, that's a staple of countdown, really. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's like the first thing you look out for. Yeah. And then that's already three letters. So all you're doing is looking for shorter letters in the rest of the words. Um, and so it's little things like that. Um, common, common startings, common endings. And then... You, I'd always start low, so you, the first word you see, whatever it is, just write it down, because then you've got something on the board, mm -hmm. and then you progressively go, okay, can I get something in one letter longer? Can I get something in one letter longer? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it is, it's, it's quite interesting how it all sort of scrambles around in my head, um, and you see all these different avenues you can take. Um, I, yeah. I saw you, James, actually doing basically what Kai has just said, of writing down short words, but you were doing it as the letters were going on the board, yeah, if you're not the one choosing the letters, you can sometimes like write them down in a different order or write them down in different words as they come along. And sometimes, another quite nice thing, it's quite nice to sometimes see the same nine letters in a different order. So, you know, if you get like a five letter word, you can also just write the remaining four letters alongside it and then you've got, you, you just see it and it, see, see different combinations. Wow. Yeah, I've, I've, I've heard some people will write the letters in a square instead as well. Yeah, I've, seen that. I've seen friends do that as well, say a circle or a square. Yeah, put it in a three by three group. Because, I mean, you already have the letters in that order on the board. So mm -hmm. why not write them down in a different order, as you say? Um, and sometimes that helps people scramble the letters up a bit. Like you see people playing Scrabble, who are always like yeah. switching the letters around on the exactly. rack. Right? And then you can put the ING together, or you can put the EST together, or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but it is interesting how everyone does it in a different way, I think. It's, um, it's really quite cool to, to look into here. Yeah. So quite just a key thing just to get started and write some stuff down. Yes, yeah. yeah. I think I think 
as I say, as soon as you've got a word, scribble it down because then that's a confidence boost. Yeah, you exactly. In terms of the show, you always just like if your brain just freezes, mm -hmm. at least if you saw a five letter word in the first two seconds, right there. You know, you've got something. Do you get moments of brain freeze where you like have that panic, like, oh god, I, my, my mind's completely in shock? Right now, or? I think I think I had one or two, but because I was I was quite young, obviously when I first did it, I I don't think I had the full range of emotions. <laughs> quite <laughs> like, I was barely nervous at all. It just it was just sort of quite natural. It it's not like, really like young footballers sometimes they break into the scene when they're 16, mm. 17. Like Rooney had his best days when he was like 17, 18, and 10 years later he's a more accomplished player, but actually. Some of his best stuff was like 17, 18. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Hope you've not seen the best of Kyle. Oh, no, no, I, I <laughs> peaked a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ask, ask him about when he came back on the show. <laughs> oh, so in fact, tell us now. I've said, well, I got invited back a couple of times. They do these, um, they can't do these tournaments every few years where they gather up all the contestants from the last few years who have sort of done extremely well or they've peaked public interest or something. And I, so I got invited back to a couple of them and I, I, I lost heavily. <laughs> I lost the first tournament I did. I then got a special episode, which was just a one-off, uh, which I lost. And um, <laughs> I then got invited back for another tournament, which is the 30th birthday. So that would have been in 2012. And I lost my first show again on that. So it's, it's, it's not been uh, quite as glamorous a record since, I think. <laughs> it's definitely, we sort of forget about those ones. Just remember, remember me when I was about, about that high. So. When we think about like, um, the numbers, because it'd be quite cool to hear like, how you work through those, because definitely with the 952, you blew the mind of like, Cal Vorderman, as well as everyone else. Like, yeah. How can you look Cal Vorderman's mind blow that? So how, like, how do you think about working those out? Well, I mean, they're just, I guess, lots of different ways to approach it with lots of different... So, for example, the, we had one with six from the six small numbers. Yeah. And trying to work that one out feels really different to trying to work out one with four big numbers because the kind of tricks you've got, the kind of uh, operations you can do feel completely different. If you've got six small numbers, it's just first a challenge just to get anywhere near. Um, okay. Can you get anywhere near it? And then try and adjust what you've... You know, maybe you can find a way to multiply four numbers together that gets kind of close. Right. And then you can try and adjust a little bit. Um, whereas I think with the four big numbers, maybe there are more, I don't know, sort of particular strategies that you might have kind of played with before. You know how the four big numbers work with each other. Uh, so, um, so, so does that mean, like, so are you like really adept with then, like, both of like 25, 75, the 50, 50 the and 100? Numbers. Like, are you kind of, do you see how they like fit together and do you like already have like well versed? kind of strategies for them. Yeah, I think a bit. Yeah, you know, I mean, there are there are definitely some things like for you 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 can work out what you can get with just those four numbers alone, for example. Oh, really? You can get to there's a, well, one nice thing is you can get to 65 with 65. with just the 25 the 50 the 75 or just the 25 the 75 and the 100 just by doing 25 times 25. And kind oh, of surprisingly wow. often okay, yeah. that is going to get you somewhere near, mm -hmm. you know, that with the other you might get somewhere near just mm -hmm. you know, if you can't think of anything else that that might start you off. Did you do much prep beforehand? Obviously, you must have done a bit, but like, did you kind of get into, you know, strategies of like being top of your game for certain things? Like, did you do much training? I did with the numbers. I did with the letters. Um, I did much, and so when I was on the show, this was back in the nineties when there wasn't so much on the web in terms of like you know practice letters game, <laughs> practice numbers games that kind of thing <laughs> you can get now. But I did um, write a little program that solved a numbers game. And like so, I can so well. practice against that, and actually just seeing, you know, you try a puzzle, you can't get it, or you get it one way, and then the computer tells you another way of getting it, so um, it and it like shows you, and you're like, how could I? It looks really. Sometimes it looks really impossible, and you're like, how could I possibly have worked that out myself? Mm. And then you actually see, oh, okay, maybe when you get underneath it, it's that you can break that down into a series of steps, and you're like, okay, actually, you could have thought that up in advance. And it helps you then for other questions yeah. that are kind of. Similar. What about you, Clyde? Did you do a similar thing, or was it like, did you write a program? Uh, I mean, it's funny, it's funny you say that, because uh, in first year, so I, I studied maths and computer science at uni, and in first year of computer science, we did actually write uh, a numbers solver for Countdown. Really? Um, yeah. Was it because you were in the class? <laughs> <laughs> Special problem. I, I don't walk around with like a banner saying. <laughs> um, so that was, that was really interesting. I mean, you did it obviously a, a while before us, uh, but it was really interesting learning how that works. And um, for me, with the with the maths, I think a lot of it is practice. You mentioned um, the times tables and stuff like that. Well, one of the um, one of the questions we had um, in our other episode was um, 
I, I worked out 975 was 75 times 13. Uh, and that's, um, that's just something that I, I know straight away because it's just sort of ingrained in me now. Yeah. Um, so on that, has it been ingrained by repeated exposure or have you sat down and learned the 75 tables, <laughs> the 25 tables? I think it's just most, mostly repeated exposure, yeah. yeah. Um, if you watch Countdown enough, yeah. you're going to see quite yeah, a lot of multiplications by 75. Mm. Course, but I mean, definitely yeah. for me, I, at the time it went on, I would not have to have thought a millisecond about 13 times 75. Um, yeah. now, now I have to like, yeah, or you know, <laughs> 775 or something. There's some, there's some process that I didn't used to have to go through there. So it was I'm too rusty now. So it's automated then, that those things, some of those things at the time were just like... Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Right, okay. And that's really interesting because I think um, for our students, they often say, oh, you know, we want to be creative with maths, but you need a, a bedrock of fundamental skills. Like for example, once you know that 13 times 75 is 975, then you can be creative with the other numbers there. Yeah. But if you haven't got that, then it's going to be difficult to get right up there. Mm. And I think, I think it's so easy to pick it up with practice. Like, mm -hmm. the great thing about countdown is the skills are so repeatable. If you just do several rounds of numbers, get you'll, get, you'll get different solutions each time, obviously, but it's the same skills, and you'll just keep picking it up and picking it up, um, and eventually just this become natural. I think that's really interesting what you said, Bobby, about, and it really applies to doing maths more generally as well. You, you have some kind of thing that when you're first doing it, you have to think through each step. And then gradually that thing becomes more and more like one single idea in your head, and it becomes like a box, and then that box can be part of something to level up. You know, that box is then one component of a, a method you're using one level higher than that. And that, for me, I mean, that keeps happening through school maths, through university maths, through research. It's, it's really just this idea of something that used to be a uh, difficult thing that you have to think through becomes a natural idea that is then just one idea that goes into another but kind of thing. I think, I think that's something that a lot of people who kind of get scared about maths or think about the numbers around and get really worried, they presume it's like a magic trick. Mm -hmm. And actually what's happened is the people doing it have practised it a lot and they've got to kind of understand and remember things quickly, which makes it easier to do more complex things. And I think, as you say, I think the key is practice. You know, and it's not, it isn't magic. <laughs> I mean, it's work, it's, it's yeah. fundamentally it's, it's work. It's, it's kind of creative, it's fun, I think, as well. It's yeah. kind of, I, when I'm doing it, I, I find it creative enough yeah. that it's, it's fun to do at the time. It's not, doesn't feel like you're just uh, summoning tricks that you already yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, somehow it's kind of, um, it's a really nice level of sort of elementary enough, but still kind of creative that feels, that feels fun to do. Yeah, well done, good boy. Did you do just one game? Like, how did it kind of work? Were you in like quite a lot? Because I mean, you did eight, you won eight consecutive games, right? So how did yes. it work? Well, that was only filmed over two days. Um, they film five shows a day. Is their is their five. standard output? Yeah. Um, I, I think I think what sort of is quite unusual for some shows is that Countdown doesn't take any longer to film than you actually see on the TV. Um, so oh, the episode yeah. lasts about 45, 50 minutes. It only takes about an hour to shoot, so you can uh, just do that. Yeah. The, the celebs go get their, get their makeup done, get their <laughs> clothes changed, you know. Yeah, of course, <laughs> yeah. And you guys, will you get We're, your clothes changed? You'd have a different, yeah, they'd yeah. Yeah. have a different shirt. Yes, yeah, so we'd, have, we'd or... have to bring at least five outfits <laughs> to the yeah. studio. And this was before we'd ever been on, so you'd have no idea how well you're going to do. Yeah, and they yeah. say, you got, you've got to bring at least five. <laughs> I think, there's no way I'm going to need five outfits. <laughs> 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 As it happens, I need mean, eight, yeah. Um, which was quite bizarre. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was quite a full-on day. Uh, I remember by the eighth one, which was the fifth of the day. So I did three on the first day, five on the second. By the end of my run, I was absolutely exhausted. Um, it, was, it was quite knackering, it was quite full-on. But there was, was just so many emotions as well, like of relief, of like just joy, I guess. That, uh, it, it, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't a bad thing at all, it was fantastic. It's such a lovely experience, yeah. Oh. And, it, and it is tiring to do lots, but also you're kind of getting used to it while, of course, there's a new, your opponent's a new person coming in every time. Yeah. So you're kind of, there is a nice feeling of like, I kind of belong in this seat. Um, yes. <laughs> do you think that helped? Do you think it actually yeah. was, was, you found it easier when you had that repeat? Yeah, I definitely think your first game is harder because yeah. you're getting used to, yeah. okay. you know, where everything is and how everything sounds. And, yeah. So to come in and win, you're, you're almost like, you're coming in as the underdog in most cases. Like, 
on the first one. Yes, yeah, right? Because the other person's been there a few times. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah okay. and, some, and you can get really unlucky. I mean, if you come in in your first game and you're just against some um, some person who's really good and is really well set... Like you guys. And that's it over. That's yeah. your countdown career over, really. Yeah. Which is such a shame. Did you have any really close ones? Yeah, like, like my, eight, when you were like, could have no longer my the my second show, my second show, I was two points behind on the conundrum, and I remember I was on my kind of like I was, what just yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> almost identical, you know, <laughs> same, same sort of pressure yeah. on me. Um, but luckily, I got that conundrum quite quickly. And what was the um, the, the the scramble was Mud Temple. I'll give you a couple of seconds. Um, mud Temple. Okay, you go, give us but yeah, I managed to managed to get it, um, and I was a nervous wreck, but luckily it worked out. Oh, I need to see that. I need to see it in front of me. You do, don't you? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I think. Yeah. Oh, plummeted. Yes. Yeah. Very well oh, done. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was no idea that. I mean, <laughs> wow. Temple. And did you have close ones? Just do you that you remember or? Were you just I like certainly had close, close ones. ones. I don't remember now whether they were close ones in the first eight. They probably were, but I don't remember. I definitely the ones I really remember were maybe the close ones that I lost in like the semi-final after oh, that. Wow. Um, where I lost it on the conundrum. There was a conundrum that I needed oh. to get and I didn't get. Like the same yeah, yeah. same situation I guys in. Say, yeah. And that feels like uh, actually the worst situation where you're behind and if no one gets it. You go out, and that's what mm. happened. That neither of us got it. Yeah. Uh, um, so it was in your hands, but yeah. Oh, what was the word? Elusive word. The, it was a difficult one. The, the word was dreamboat, Ooh. which is a fairly. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. So, so my brother, the Scrabble player, yeah. was um, uh, sitting in the audience watching. That was the first time he'd come to watch actually. And um, afterwards, I was like, uh, "Did you see it?" He was like, "Yeah." Oh, oh, no. 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 You're out. Oh. I had to wait 30 seconds. I was nowhere near the answer. The answer was laser disc, which I didn't know was one oh, word. Yeah. Um, those 30 seconds felt like an hour or two. <laughs> it was yeah. so difficult. Um, <laughs> they really do know how to how to get the excitement out of you. Yeah. Get attention yeah. Yeah. Uh, studio, you hear the music, the countdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's uh, that's going on just behind you yeah. uh, on the clock. It's it's not very loud, but you can definitely notice it. It's enough to. If you're already a bit shaky, it's enough to make you go. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> That's second Which is, but it's also good because it times it for you. You know when you're. Yes. You know when you're just coming to the end. And mm. yeah. yeah. I I think it helped me that having the, that behind me. I think that helped with uh, when I said earlier when I was writing down small words to start with, because you always know, as you say, you're being. You, you know how long you've got left, and you've got that pressure up against you. So. You, it's important to just, just get something down. And it makes um, it feel a bit more like it was at home. I mean, that's the other thing. I yes. Guess. If there hadn't been the music in the studio, you know, you're used to that when you're watching on TV, so, mm. so it's quite nice. Yeah, yeah. Practising at home with your notepad, <laughs> <laughs> put your pencil behind your ear, yeah, watching chilled. along. I really wish I could like bottle like your both your kind of relaxedness to the idea of kind of games and problem solving, because like, it's, it's one of those things I think loads of our students have real issues with you know, there's a problem like in a, a question or something, and they're like debilitated because they're worried about getting it wrong. And actually, the thing is, just get started, and you know, and enjoy the process of like working stuff out and have a bit of a play, and you know, think it through. Like, it's just it's quite nice to think of problem solving as playful, which I don't think we hear very often because I think people get worried about the timing. You know, we've got thirty seconds, like, and then they just sort of freak out and it's like actually relax it's cool <laughs> take your time it's you know have a have a play write some stuff down which is like something we would really like more people to understand it's okay to just have a go yeah i think uh, at all levels of math it's a really really good thing to encourage and it's actually funny because sometimes you get the impression sometimes that people get worse at it when they learn more um i sometimes find that with with kind of with the students i teach i've sort of maybe asked them a question um and they're like i can't think of what 
what piece of knowledge I've got that I, that I can apply to this? Yeah. You know, what method is there? And I feel like if I'd asked you this two years ago, yeah. you actually would have like, oh, this is a really interesting problem. I can I yeah, can for choice they have so too many methods in their head. Right, that's right. They think that there should be a, a, a set thing that applies Procedure to Procedure or something like that. Whereas like this, yeah. maybe before they knew they'd not seen it, anything like it before in their lives. And oh. at that point you can like, uh, you know, yeah, you can just roll your sleeves up and really, and really try. Dig in. And, um, so keeping that um, openness to just, like you say, just you know, start with anything and get your hands dirty and, and play around with it and see what... See what comes out. That's really important. It's been really like refreshing to to hear. You know what I mean? And kind of it's like as I say, it's just really nice to sort of speak to people who are seen as like legends. Legends, and then just be like, oh, oh, you have to scribble stuff down on paper so too. The legends had yeah. became legends because they, they had a process. <laughs> yeah. but I'm like, a bit worried about like devaluing of meanings of words. <laughs> <laughs> But it used to be like, yeah. you know, Heracles or something. Yeah. Heracles and Kant now. <laughs> yeah. no, you like, if you multiply things together a bit. <laughs> Thank you again. Well, to everybody. <laughs> but, but <laughs> to go in order. Thank you, Bobby and Susan from the Matt Appeal team. What you're doing is awesome. As we know, I love what you do. We, we like to work together these days, so <laughs> keep doing what you're doing. James and Kai, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and for taking part in our countdown themed video. I hope everyone's enjoyed watching and uh, please do subscribe to my channel for more maths fun and I'll see you all soon. <laughs> <laughs> We're waving now. So you know <laughs>